episode. What's up, everybody? Calvin Bowie, a.k.a. Captain Charisma. Out with my boy, Phil Ozaki, here with uh, Ro Fusion. Oh, you got some good energy. Hey, it's all right. That's some good energy. Okay, so we're at Ro Fusion. It's a new restaurant that just... Is it officially open? Yeah, we officially opened this past weekend. Uh, we've been soft open for a, a month just to kind of work out a lot of kinks because it's our first uh, big venture. But what, what's, we, what's up with the air quotes? You know, a soft open it has a lot of different you know understanding. So we just called it a soft open. I wouldn't really say it, it was just a open without telling anybody. So. I like that. <laughs> and then as you do a soft opening, you re you rework your menu, you rework the placement of foods on the menu. Yep. Try to get your timing down, try to get the uh, experience down. The moment they walk in through the doors to the time they leave the doors, it's all about that. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, soft opening for us was actually really important because we made a huge change. I actually completely changed our entire menu um, during soft open, so it was a big... Because you listen. Yeah, exactly. Because so you listen, you realize timing on food did not come out the way you would want to. <laughs> Uh, so we, we're sitting here today. Sierra Madre is in an outskirt, a quieter town. Yeah, much quieter. Uh, north, near Pasadena, east of Pasadena. It's a city that, even though I grew up in Huntington Beach, I never knew Sierra Madre existed. Beautiful city. It sits along the foothills of what is that? What, what mountain is that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll call that Mount <laughs> Phil. Mount Phil. Mount Phil. <laughs> Phil. Um, but I mean, you can literally look and see yeah. the foothills of, around you. And I think that this little area, the, the moment I drove in, it looks super nice. It looks super quaint. Yeah, definitely. And it gives you the ability as a chef, as a young chef, so you're so young. I'm proud of your ass. Thank you. Uh, to really kind of develop who you are, flavor-wise, and everything else. I'm going to turn this camera around. Actually, we'll do a shot first. Did you already finish yours? I did drink most Put of some my... more. Right. Put some more in. Right, this is it. what happens when, when, when you're at, you're at the uh, restaurant yeah. during closed hours, might my, my I say. I mean, you should be at home right now sleeping. And your partner's like, hey, so, come out. There's this guy from Vietnam who does a YouTube show. <laughs> come cook for him. I was pretty excited, really nervous, because I don't really do the camera thing. You know, I like to be in the back. but you know, That's why the camera's so small. <laughs> you can't like, even yeah, notice it, exactly. dude. It's like a little robot. It's stuff. like a little robot. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera around. We're gonna go through dish by dish, five dishes. We're gonna explain each dish. We're gonna turn the camera back around. We're gonna eat some of it. We're gonna talk about it, talk about the flavors, textures. Why did you do the things you do? So, I think that's really important as young chefs and even you know first time, second time restaurateurs, really understand why you do what you do because that's what the customers come from. And if you can't explain that, well, I doing? can't fucking tell yeah, you shit, you dude. Yeah, what are you doing? All right, hold on. I got. I gotta go to the camera. Hold on. Okay. Oh shit. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I count. I gotta count. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with this one first, and then we'll go. We'll go this way, yeah. All right. So yeah. I'm just gonna be the names, or like uh, kind of how I make them. All right. So this is basically our chicken karage. Um, mm -hmm. I did do a few things to it to try to make it a little more fun, but um, just you know the very basics was I started with a, a really simple chicken karage recipe that I've had. Um, I've seen all kinds of like wet batter, dry batter, but I kind of mixed uh, a wet batter with the dry batter to make something really light, really crunchy, and also like kind of simple and not over overpowering. Okay, for those who are in the Midwest, Kansas, St. Louis, uh, Oklahoma, what is chicken karage? Chicken karage is basically some Asian fried chicken. Japanese um, fried chicken, Japanese right? fried chicken, specifically. exactly. Yeah, specifically Japanese fried chicken. Um, Karage, if you ever see it, it looks like karage or something like that oh. on the menu. Um, that is fr Japanese fried chicken. So, uh, and we love fried chicken. So we love fried chicken. Love okay. Fried chicken. Next dish. All right. This is um, our crab baked mac. It originally started as just uh, mac and cheese because everybody has mac and cheese, and you know we're a steak restaurant. So, try to do something kind of home style. Um, as the recipe developed, I wanted to one up it, so we added crab, and uh, as that kind of came in. Some of my Mississippi influences came in. What and, you Mississippi? Uh, yeah, I used to live in Mississippi no for a little shit. while. Yeah, so I picked oh. up some 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 things there. So I, I incorporated a couple re recipes from Mississippi, and uh, that's what I came up with. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and it's vegetarian crab, right? Uh, it is just uh, it's just like a mixed specialty crab that we get from our purveyor. Yeah. Shout uh, them out, dude! You gotta shout out your purveyors. <laughs> well, we use yeah we use Lux Seafood, you know. So they, what up they to take Lux care of us. Yeah, they take care of us. Uh, um, this is uh, what we call the smoky seared salmon. Um, it is smoked paprika on the outside, then we torch it up, uh, slice real thin, and then it has red onion, which as opposed to like, you know, rough chop, um, I, I super thin, just slice it. So it makes it so it's less like abrasive and spicy. And what's that cut called? Um, at Brumois. 
Brunoir. That's right. It's like a super tiny guy. That's the exactly one one centimeter by one centimeter. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, And then they got the kaiwata. They kind of make it a little bit spicy. Nice. Uh, the, it has, it's in a ponzu dressing, which I added truffle um, too. I'm not a big fan of truffle oil, but for whatever reason, this this one actually it works, it works really right? Well. Yeah, not everything, yeah. totally but it yeah. works. And I really yeah. like the fact that you you did out and I, that's the one, <laughs> one dish out of everything that I'm really excited to try. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of truffle oil, but this one it counts. I'm sure. not either, <laughs> but sometimes it works. Yeah, exactly. You know, truffle popcorn works. Yeah, there's certain things that it's just like it just smell with everything else. It just works for sure. Okay, next dish. Uh, these are our shooters. Um, we wanted something to kind of make the, the meal start well, kind of start you in the direction that we want you to be in. Um, so we started with something fresh. It's a, it's a good fusion dish. It has some serrano, some uh, micro cilantro. It uh, has a cool rice. These little rice balls are called bubu arare, which is like a little crispy rice thing. Um, I have some matchstick radishes in there and it has like a ginger ponzu. So it also nice. has avocado cucumber to kind of get you going for the hand rolls. Nice. All right, final dish. This and is a dish that I think is <laughs> Everybody's been eyeing. This is the, the, the prime ribeye. Um, it's a high grade, obviously, prime ribeye. The fat is really well marbled when we get it in. Um, it's 16 ounces boneless. We, it's seasoned with a blackening. Um, when I was in Mississippi, usually, uh, obviously, they do blacken like all kinds of catfish, different mm-hmm. things. So um, I actually took a blackened recipe that I, I really enjoy um, from the, the South and I incorporated some Szechuan seasoning. Um, I also used to mess with some uh, garam masala. So I added some other, some other like heavy spices that are kind of cool. So it has this a- kid is on fire. These are all <laughs> the flavors that that I would cook with. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And then this is the, the it's a prime rib, so it's a center cut ribeye. Yep. And then what is that? An inch and a half thick? Two yeah, it's probably, it's probably about an inch, inch and a half thick. Um, it's it's a nice nice chunk of meat for sure. For sure. Well, you're gonna eat this with me, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's no way that I'm able to oh, yeah. finish this whole thing by myself. Oh yeah. Wrong way. <laughs> all right. So let's get some plates. Let's uh, get these in. Am I in this shot? I thought my head is chopped off. See how, see how this works? There's boom. no editing. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, okay, I'm good, I'm good oh, here. Oh, I'm good. All right, let's go. Okay, start off with the shooters. All right. Uh, we have one together and then we'll go from there, right? Okay, so, oh, is this, okay. is this um, how you show respect to elders? This is, yeah, this is kind of like, <laughs> you know, and then we get this complaint like, oh, you can't shoot them. Why? I shouldn't call them shooters. I'm like, who says that? I, I, I'm like, come on. Like, what are who, we talking about here? If shooter, you come down a row, fusion, and you say that, I'll beat your ass. A shooter, a popper, a, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to say. A why one does, hitter. <laughs> why do you need to have all those terminologies? I don't know. You know, it's, that's beyond me. And then they come back and tell me that. I say, look, was it good? Was it good? Yeah, was it good? Yes, <laughs> exactly, right? And it's good. Yeah. And you're all good. Okay, so exactly. what fish is this? This is a uh, hamachi. This one's belly right here. Okay. Um, we do we do hand rolls, so I actually take the same hamachi cut. This is hon hamachi, so it's like a little bit higher quality. Okay. Um, and yeah, we just pop it back and just show you everything. Up. Cheers. Dude, congratulations, little bro. Thank you, man. Congratulations. I, I, I wish you all the success. I hope that you continually grow with your flavors and your techniques, and you get out there and really do something good for the community. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it's. It's surreal every single day. Like I'm. This dead is your first tired. restaurant, isn't it? I've had. I did something else with some some other group that kind of you know didn't do me so nice. But at the end of the day, you know we live, we learn. I think hey, most of us chefs gotta get screwed. Yes. <laughs> I, I I have plenty of stories. Can we before we do this? Yes. Just, let's take a moment here, and let's really look around and let's admire and and live in the now. Dude, the the past, dude, you can't do shit with that. Yeah. Exactly. Plant the seeds now for the future so you can cultivate the future. Don't think short term. Don't think short minded. Think long term with this. You got this. Definitely. No, definitely. Yeah. You need dishwasher? I yeah. got your back. <laughs> You're real love. <laughs> Hell yeah, I will. All right, here we go. Ready? Okay. okay. Shoot it. Yeah. <clears throat> Great choice in hamachi. It's a nice, flaky white fish. Mm-hmm. It Under. sits well in that ponzu that is a little bit sour. Ponzu is a soy-based um, citrus kind of sauce, sauce yeah. but it's nice. And what really gets me are those little fried rice balls. Yeah. The ubi ubi. make a difference, right? Uh, bubu arare. Bubu arare. Bubu arare. Say it 10 times fast. <laughs> right nah, now, I, I, I don't think you can do it. Right right no, 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 Go for it. You want to hear? Bubu arare. Can I say it fast? I, I, I can't do that. No, you can't. Can. Okay. But one. and then where is that bubu arare from? Is it a Mediterranean thing? Is it a Middle uh, It's definitely thing? a Japanese. Uh, it's just basically like a rice cracker. You know how we, we love rice, mm. all kinds of rice crackers. Yeah. So it's just a little rice cracker ball. There's like a couple different flavors in there. I don't know if you've ever got like the rice. They sell the rice 
cracker bags. Yep, yep, Sometimes yep. you get the spicy ones, sometimes you get the seaweed mm -hmm. ones, so it's the same thing. So they sell like, but they're little, little balls. Toasty, almost like a, 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 a pop, it, it is a pop yeah. rice kernel, but it has that popcorn-y taste. And it leaves a nice like. And it leaves a nice really toasty aftertaste. Mm -hmm. Instead of using toasted sesame, this is a really nice way to bring in a toastiness to it. Yep. All right, good. Oh. Let's go to the salmon. Yeah, no, for sure. Let's oh, for sure. Uh, wait. Oh, you want to go to first? Uh, Will you go karage? Let's go karage, yeah. Okay, go, go karage. So karage is, yeah. of course, Japanese fried chicken. And if anybody knows how much I love it, uh, I absolutely love karage because, one, it's only thigh meat. Two, the ingredients to make it are five things. Sorry, bro, I'm going to tell them. No, do it. Mirin, what? Mirin, soy, ginger, garlic. Yep, and we send, uh, we actually use uh, some potato starch in there, so it kind of adds some... Oh, I can explain. So, like, basically, you can. When we started, well, I eat. You, you explain it. all you want. Yeah, when we started this one, it was like real basic. We had, you know, some some different kinds of feedback. But mm -hmm. uh, what ended up happening was I took the original and we created something we call slime now, and uh, it's basically like potato starch and it's mixed with water, mm -hmm. and we, we cook it just so it's not like raw potato starch, and so it creates like a slime, and then we mix that with our our uh, karage, and it's like. That's what makes it, gives it that extra. Well, I gotta write that down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Cook out the flour. Cook out the flour yeah. so that <laughs> you get more of a, cause, that, cause you, cook, you cook flour out, you got a root right. if, you had, if you had oil. Right. Cooking it with, with water, I'm interested to see what the molecular structure does for potato starch and water. Yeah, That's interesting. That is for sure, yeah. But. And then it's fried basil leaves on top or yep. captor lime leaves? Yep, uh, basil leaves. Exactly. Basil leaves. Yep. So, you know, basil isn't something that, that you ever see in Japanese cu culture right. or cuisine. Definitely. Zero. That comes from the, the Taiwanese and, uh, you know, the, the tea joints when you go in there and you get your fried chicken. I gotta love it. That's right. Gotta love it. That's right. And so you, you took, again, you took things that you understand. You took ingredients that you understand, techniques you understood. <laughs> things I love. And you put, something, you put something out where if anybody said, yo, Phil, why? You'd be able to get them in a heartbeat, right? A hundred, a hundred times. And you know, I haven't even said anything about, literally this is uh, my partner, Eddie, he has a couple favorite dishes. And uh, I would say this is, this is his, in his top five for sure. He's, I literally put this on the menu because he goes, Phil, are we going to have karage? I was like, Eddie, we'll have karage. <laughs> so. The marinade has, has gotten all the way through the chicken. Right? And I think that's really important. Yeah, for sure. You can only do so much with the dry rub. Exactly. It'll only, it only get, you know, like one millimeter into the, the actual protein. Yeah, exactly. You can brine, but then you brine, change the texture, too. Change the texture. you add too much uh, moisture yeah. to the content. So when you fry it, you get all the steam coming off and you're like, I don't want to lose, I don't want the, the moisture to evaporate. Exactly. I want to keep that into the chicken. Right. So it's, it's about taking simple ingredients. Chicken thighs, you can buy at any, uh, you probably shop at Whole Foods, but I don't. Any I pack and it. save. <laughs> Any food for less. And yeah. I don't even go to Vaughn's. I go to John's because I'm that hood. Yeah, I like it. Love it for it. Yeah. Sure. And you can take something so simple and all the ingredients that he uses, most likely you can find at any grocery store. Definitely. Any but it's taking store. those ingredients and making something really beautiful behind it. Facts. Good job. So, okay. so far, two for two. Hey, not bad, dude. Like, so far, I've eaten a lot of food in America, and I have to say, I'm All not. Right. Uh, I think we should roll this one in right here. Hell yeah. This is. Uh, so you said, it's, you said smoky, smoky salmon, cheese. right? Yeah, exactly. Now, did you do a cold smoke to your salmon? No, I just uh, torched it up. Uh, the, it has some smoked paprika. It's not, it's not, I don't want too much of a flavor. This is, you know, another starter. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Um, you'll see, it's really. I got two pieces, sorry. My bad. Get them, get them both. <laughs> it tastes like one. It's, it's all like real, super light, crispy, fresh. Mm. That <laughs> that is probably one of your standout dishes, dude. It's yeah. probably one of your. It's so the finesse level on that. Thank you. It's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard to hold back. <laughs> yeah. Since I've been in America for the last two months, it, they have put <laughs> cheese on everything, yeah, and it's true. like there is no need for all that Velveeta. Yeah, that's true. Right? Sometimes there is though. There is. So there, there, is. there, there, there definitely is. But to, you know, as, as a chef, to, to edit yourself. Yes. It's, it's, oh, it's so easy to throw everything at the kitchen, at the kitchen sink. But that's why food is, they always say fusion is confusion. If you don't understand why you're doing certain things, right. you're like, well, I like this and I like that. And 
what am I, what am I as, a, as a diner supposed to understand? Right. And that truffle oil, that little bit of truffle oil in there, it does, uh, does wonders. And I like the texture of the, of the salmon, and I love the bernois of the onion. Awesome. And that took a lot of time, didn't it? It did. No, yeah. <laughs> you get better at it. It takes me like a sugar. All right. Cool. Um, should, we, should we go into the, so mac, the, the so crab mac. mac? Yeah, check that one out. You know, so far you haven't eaten any of your own food. I, I eat this at least every day, right? Yeah, I taste it. People taste are like, oh, why don't you eat your tacos? I'm like, because I eat it the last seven so, years. Yeah, exactly. I eat it every day. I taste it multiple times. All right, yeah. what cheeses do you use for your mac? Um, this one has uh, Gruyere. Um, it has... Uh, you know, that, that's my OnlyFans name, by the way. <laughs> OnlyFans.com backslash Gruyere. Find a Mac Gruyere. How you doing? Is he trying to have sex with you? I don't know. I think it's like hand, hand gestures, hand job. Hand job. Like yeah, he's trying to... Risty. Yeah. Oh, Do I want a wristy? He's saying it's locked at the door. Hold on. Wait, wait, oh. wait. Hey, we're filming right now. Yeah. We're filming right now. Hey, do, do, do the film. We are filming right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, all right, all right. Who is that guy? Uh, he's our fish guy. Oh. So, well, thank usually, God. Yeah, usually the door's unlocked back there. I'm sure he tried to unlock it. But... Thank God, because I, I, I thought he was trying to, like, you know, come over come and say. Come over here. Hey, is it free? I tip, I tip well. I tip well. Yeah. Okay, so back to group, back to Jesus. See, I told you this show is nothing. Yeah, That's just the That's just the You feel better now? Yeah, I love it. You feel better now, dude? All right. Good. I'm happy to see that. All right. Gruyere is good. Great melting cheese. Has great body. It has great depth. Okay, what else? Um, it has... Man, it, I'm just blanking right now. We put three cheeses on it. Oh, it has American cheese because, you know, American is the most melty, most basic, most delicious... You got, can't go wrong with American no, cheese. No, mac, mac and cheese invent, was invented in America. You no, know, what are we talking about here? That's what I'm saying. How are you going to use <laughs> a Parmigiano Reggiano for a, American mac and cheese? You can't. Yeah. When I, I grew up eating literally Kraft, Kraft Mac, you know, and uh, my mom, I used to make her cook it. I almost Ooh. used to eat the noodles like crunchy, you know? Mm -hmm. so, Al dente. Uh, yeah, and then she was like, it's, it's, why are you, why are you, and she wouldn't even cook it for me anymore. She was like, you have to make it yourself because you just, you're too particular about how you want your noodles. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so. Mm -hmm. But this is, yeah, and then so we actually, um, the base of this one is, oh, we got the phone, phone ringer. Hello? Filming, filming, no. filming. Mm. Filming. <laughs> so, Listen, yeah. you made a roux. Yep. And that's your base of, of, of your mac and cheese. Indeed. And that allows all the cheeses to just, they all come together. They all hug the noodle. Where some people, and I know some people out there, will just take boiled pasta that is super super soft and they just throw cheese in there and then tough. yeah and, and then you real. pull it up and it's just clumpy yeah it's not and you wonder why it's root is flour it is oil and it is time that's it right oh you do a best bell. i should so, do yeah, a best don't you so, so basically this one right here what i ended up doing was i actually made um like uh it's it was a crab bisque that we mm -hmm. used to make in the salad oh and that's so, your base yeah so i actually didn't put any cheese in the base so mm -hmm. it stays like creamy doesn't ever get hard mm -hmm. Um, and then I put all the cheese on top, and that's why I picked like American cheese and like Gruyere cheese. That and, uh, that just like stronger cheeses. Yeah. To kind of still give it a really mac and cheese feel. That crust on your mac and cheese. Yeah, it's that Gruyere cheese. Wait, you you, you got a salamander? Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Gotta have. This one. kid got some good toys in there. What else <laughs> yeah, you got? You got Roboku. Uh, I got the Roboku. Got that's the ten thousand dollars. Emergent circulators. Got the big mixer. You do. The dehydrators and the yeah. Now I'll come over here and <laughs> cry for your ass. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's fun because it's like you know, like before you go to a place, it's like oh they don't have this, they don't have that. But mm -hmm. when it's your own restaurant, it's like well I have it in my house, so I'm just gonna bring it on over. Like you know, I have this piece of equipment, that piece of equipment, so now I can just stock it all here. That flavor, the sweet, the sweetness of the crab. I love that you use crab. I love that the the crust is the way it is, and then the sauce is that tonkatsu sauce, uh, bulldog sauce. Uh, we used unagi sauce. Un so, unagi yeah. sauce. Yeah, Another bit. savory, super umami flavor. Definitely. On something that has never seen unagi sauce before. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and because you wanted that extra level of flavor. Just that nice on the front. Thank you. Okay, we are four down. Last one to go. Last for last, right? Here. You know, I, I should show this camera like one more time, like this. Yeah, this this, this beautiful. Get the screen on so perfect. Yeah, I mean, just just how I I miss. Is this USD choice or Prime? Oh, Prime, all the time. Prime all. Prime time. all the time. That's the that should be. That well. <laughs> uh, life motto. <laughs> yeah, life motto. Uh, Phil Mountain. Uh, Phil Mountain. Prime all the time. <laughs> You're all right. The prime so, trail. 
I'm going to ask you, man. Talk to me. Do you reverse sear this? Do you sous vide it? Or is it just straight on the grill with really good technique? Yeah, so I mean, honestly, we've gone through a bunch of different like trials. We tried searing and we tried all these different things. So with the steaks that we have, I did try to show different technique because it's kind of fun to mix it up. So this one is just straight on the grill, um, just a you know, basic char grill. But the, the smoke, for me, adding the blackening is, is important because as it hits the flame, you get more flavor from that's it. Right. You know? That's right. So smoke that's equals why. flavor. Yeah. I mean, I don't care how you look at it. Yeah. Smoke equals flavor. And so with those spices on there, when that smoke hits, it's just like a you know a smoke spice, anything else. So it that's just right. brings out all those flavors. And then uh, since they're all dried spices, I just I lightly toast them to begin with, but I don't want to over toast them because I feel like once it hits the grill, it's just like retoasted, right? And you use Szechuan seasoning in there, so you kind of bring yeah. that Southern Mississippi vibe, but then you also pay homage to an area of the world that is really known for their, their not only, it's not only spice. spice. Like pepper isn't just, oh, it's, it's hot. Exactly, yeah. You know, it, it really brings a warmness. Yeah. yeah. What'd you use that? What's that? Sensation. Sensation? Boy! <laughs> How you feel? What'd you get on your SATs? Dude? You got some good words in there. I didn't make it out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you grow up in? Uh, I grew up in Arcadia, but I didn't make it to, out of Arcadia. So, oh. Uh, and then what was your first job? My first job, very first job was, uh, I had community service. So I, was, I was a troublemaker. So, oh. Um, I worked at uh, my community service. Actually, after I did community service, they did, oh, you did such a good job with community you service. You say Southwestern Army, then you and I are really alike. It was, uh, no, it was, uh, it was I, did, I did community service for okay. stuff that I did. Oh, I used to do that. that. I, was like, I was like 14, but uh, basically we planted trees. Mm. So that was the first job I had. But 16, I was a dishwasher in Mississippi. Oh, so you should have got one of these guys right here. I know. That one was like that. First of all, I love it. No. Yeah. No. Here. Hell, yeah. I think the whole thing. All these ones are meat here. Oh, I mean, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Take a better piece. All right, well, I'll put it there. <laughs> Take a better piece. All right, this one? I, yeah. Any of them are going to be like, no, no, no. Hey, you know, it's cool. I don't, I don't mind. Okay, so USDA, it's, an, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a set of cut of the ribeye. So, you know, imagine a ribeye being this. Oh, do you butcher your own meat? I don't. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, I love to butcher my own meat and, you know, source my own meat, but... He ain't talking about masturbation, by the way. No, indeed, you know. Um, but, <laughs> you know, that's, 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 that's at home. I keep my, my work and my life separate. Yeah. No, but... Because uh, you don't want to masturbate in your kitchen. Ever. That's all bad. That's Ever. <laughs> bad for business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you're, like, loosening up, dude. Because yeah. this whole show is just about the dumbass that's shit we talk about. Show, yeah. Right. So, it comes in... So, I'm guessing you, it comes in the, the entire prime rib. Right, yeah, exactly. And then, you're, you're, and then you're portioning it out. How many... Do you think in the future, once you guys are fully open, how many portions do you think you're gonna sell a day? Oh uh, man, right now we'll sell like four, you know, ribeyes, four or five ribeyes, and you know we're only open four or five hours, four hours maybe. So how much is a ribeye? Sixty bucks. Okay. So now <laughs> some of y'all are gonna be like, I can go to Sizzler. Is that are still, are they still around? Uh, I have to say that they're, they're, I remember their, their cheese toast bread was fire though. Oh. Beyond fire, no, beyond fire. fire. Yeah. So I've been I've been in Asia for twelve years. I have not been in America. So all the things that I thought oh, they were still yeah. open, they are no gone, longer open, yeah. right? So is gone. <laughs> you could think of a steak as sixty dollars, but this is something you're gonna eat by yourself. No, I generally, you know, I tell our servers to encourage people to share because it's, you know you get to taste more things. Some of our portions are like something like this. Like you could eat this by yourself essentially, and this plus, but at the same time, you might as well share it and get something. You know, taste a couple different things. So. Exactly. This beef is so well marbled. It is so rich is. that two slices. And I know those Midwestern guys right now. They're like, Calvin, I, I can eat that in, at, at breakfast. It's so rich in flavor it is. that once you have two slices, you're good. <laughs> Don't push that level. You know, when, when we're in Kobe and we're eating like real Kobe oh, steak, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. And it was like I don't know, two, two thirty for a, for a, for a steak. And they come to like little square, square yeah, uh, cuts. Pieces, yeah. And I remember I look at my wife and I'm like, yo, you know I'm eating like 12 of those and there's only, there's only 13 of them. <laughs> and she's like, go ahead. I only need one. By the time I got to my third cube. Third or four. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm good. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm so good. <laughs> and that's what you have really good quality beef. You don't need to have a ton of it. Right. It's qual 
Wait, hold on. It's quantity. It's quality over quantity. Exactly. <laughs> I had to get that one down. One or the other, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I want to eat the steak. I'll talk about it. But while I do that, I'm gonna try to buy some time. You slice your thumb. Oh yeah. Right here. Check it out. No, no, I don't want to check it out. Yeah, okay. I, I, I get, I get squeamish. All right. Well, I sure. I can just. It's like a flap. No, I, I, I know. I flap. know. All right. Okay. 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 I'm alright. I'm alright. All right, all right, all right. So, tell a story. And then we'll go from there. All right. So, um, what happened was the day before grand opening, uh, my partner and I were at his house. Business partner, you know. Let's get serious. Um, but business. Oh, partner, we gotta be, <laughs> you know, because you know, California. I don't want to miss. We gotta be very business. clear, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. No. Yeah. But anyway, business partner and I were, uh, and uh, we were kind of talking about how the next day would go and what we were planning out, what we wanted to do. And, uh, you know, he opened up a cabinet that I knew had a really nice bottle of champagne that he has. And I look over and it is like slow motion falling to the ground. And without thinking about anything else, I literally just tried to grab it. And it broke. And as I grabbed it and it broke, I literally just butchered my finger. So super quickly, I tried to grab my finger, but there was like a nice little Woo! hanging off. Woo! You know, so... Um, we're sitting there. It kind of looks like this. Kinda it like kind of looks like this. Like this. <laughs> right here. Right here. Yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, as we were sitting there about, what, five, six hours before we had to wake up to be ready for grand opening, I had a, like my, my thumb, which is a pretty important finger, I would say. Yeah, because like, when you hold your knife, you know, like your, your index finger holds the bottom yeah, of it, yeah, and then right your now. thumb is what's over the blade, and yeah, that's what... The, the grip action. Yeah. The kung fu grip. You gotta have And without it. the grip, you're, you're you know... So it's like, like what do you do like this? <laughs> <laughs> How was prep that day? Uh, How much was, prep did you get done beforehand? I, I didn't, you know, we kind of went in, everything was, uh, it's crazy over here. I really don't have too much manpower in the back, but mm -hmm. my, my, you know, my, my assistance is, is great. So we've been holding it down with the team that we have. Um, so I wouldn't say we were like super, super ready, but we ended up having a great day, um, even with, with, you know, all things in, so. I, I, I heard your partner talk about it, <laughs> how you guys slammed that first day. It was pretty unbelievable. And it's so easy to say, you know what, I sliced my thumb, hey partners, let's push this two weeks from now. It's no so way. easy to say that, but it's so much harder <laughs> to sit here and say, you know what, dude, I, I'm going to do it. I got grit, I got determination, together, there's all I in team, no matter how well you spell it. But you got through it. No facts. And do you feel like, do you feel like anything in life can be done if you put your mind to it? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you can definitely do anything within, you know. Like, Speak up, boy. Tell the audience, tell all six people right now who are watching this, <laughs> what a 31-year-old young chef who has a great resume, a great <laughs> CV, he's worked at Katsuya, he's worked at... A hot dog stand? Yeah, that's, that's great on the resume. <laughs> uh, he's worked at um, yeah, Deja Vu, yeah. Showgirls. Yeah, okay, but yeah. <laughs> that, that was my night job. You're not supposed to talk about oh, that. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> but dude, tell the audience who's watching out of young chefs, kids who are in culinary school, kids who are out of culinary school, people who are home cooks, tell them what this is your, this is your platform, bro. Tell them the message. I mean, it's never easy, and uh, I think in the industry you're you're always taken advantage of. You know, as long as you're a cook, you always feel like you're underappreciated. So if you really have, you know, you determined to become something and open a restaurant, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, but just keep holding on to those jobs with your own, you know, self motivation. Figure out what you want to learn there. Figure out what it's offering you, because most of these places will not offer you a fair wage for what you do. So you know, you have to be getting something. Out, and that's what I figured out pretty early. So everywhere I would go into a job, I would be like, okay, well, you're not gonna pay me well no matter what I do here. So what can I learn to better my myself to make myself more prepared for when I do want to open up a restaurant? Yeah, that's good, bro. So yeah, that's, you know. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> Damn, but why didn't I do that in my career? It's gonna be real frustrating. Okay. Uh, I will also say this then. You know, if, if you want to open up your own business, uh, whether it be a restaurant or a bar or what have you, yeah. you better be ready to sacrifice. There you go. Put that <laughs> out there. That sacrifice is real. Yeah. All those holidays, oh, well, ain't going to be there. Labor Day weekend, ain't going to be there. Yeah, you got to have passion too because, you know, those days where you're not sure what you want to do, if, it, if it's meant to, like, that passion will push you through. I've only been doing this for 
Ten like, years, right? I mean, I've been cooking for over 14 years, 15 years, but... Since what? Since you were 10? Uh, I started when I was 15, 16. I was dishwasher and I became my first fry cook in Mississippi. Really? Frying up catfish, frying up crawfish, oh. frying up shrimp, and, you know, making etouffee gumbo, everything. If you ever get... <laughs> if, 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 if the partners in the back who are listening right now, hey, partners, <laughs> ever give you a, a, a seven to ten day uh, span... Yeah. Where you, you, your kitchens, your kitchens is in order, everything's good. Come meet me. Yeah. In Bama. Okay. Come meet me in Alabama, Louisiana. Oh, we'll take this little, this little device. Yeah. And we'll shoot a oh, series right. together. Now Sounds again, it, it's gonna suck, but maybe it'll <laughs> suck a little less if you and I are doing it together. Sounds by myself, it'll yeah. suck. For sure. Come out there and let's eat some food because I want to yeah. see the South through your lens. <laughs> yeah. It's, right. It's, it's different. It's definitely different than over here. The people are very nice, though. You know, no one to knock anyone in Mississippi. But it's a lot slower. Hey, I'm cool with slow. I'm cool with slow. Yeah. I'm hey. getting older now, man. Hey, it makes you appreciate some different things, you know. Let's get another shot of uh, this good bourbon here. This is this is the Blantons. This is the very exclusive. My, my my business partner, Mr. Edward, was highly sought after. He came back after he found some, and he was like. They have one more bottle. Should I buy it? And I was like, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you're ready for it. Thanks again to to Row Fusion to have this here. You know, while well, I'm on my my US tour right now, we're two months into it, and uh, I, I've been meeting some, some some amazing people. Why is your face so close to my face? I don't know. You trying to show them that how big my head is? No, it I is got big. a big head too, though, so you can't. If we both got big heads, it's like okay. it cancels each other out. I think we have like another six minutes left. All right. What is your style of cooking? What What does you know Mount Phil have to say about his cooking now? When you get to the top of Mount Phil, what do you get to eat? Yeah. All right. Um, I like comfort food, man. I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, when in Mississippi, I didn't realize that I like to cook how much, as much as I do until I was in Mississippi. And I kind of got a, like a taste of the hospitality and like what it really means to be hospitable and like, you know, treat the people that come into your house as like your, your neighbors. So tasting that in Mississippi, I think, really gave me a, a, a different perspective because I lived, I lived in California. I grew up in, over here in L.A. So people are not that, that you know, everyone's kind of like mind your own business kind of thing over they here. They are, man. Know? They are. Which is it's cool, but because once you kind of learn them, you know, everyone has their own thing they're doing. But... It's also nice to be able to be friendly and not expect people to like you say hi or say yes ma'am yes sir them to be like well why you call me ma'am like sorry <laughs> you know if you're woke just turn the camera off right now just, just turn YouTube <laughs> off right now because we're gonna say something offensive and I don't want to hear my comments uh, I really don't <laughs> yeah you can, you can blend that one on me then mm. <laughs> if somebody calls you and greets you salutes you salutation yeah you know yes ma'am yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is for starts. Know that their parents raised a good child. Yeah, you know, it's not so bad. But I think, I think overall it just gave me a different perspective and just made me appreciate what I have here, you know. And now I just want to give back. Gratitude, man. Yeah, Gratitude's yeah. everything. Exactly. Gratitude is absolutely fucking everything. And what you guys are doing here, man, I mean, th there are good people, be people eating your food, not understanding it. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's... Our jobs as chefs, I mean, I'm still a cook after 20 years, but it's our jobs as what we do in our industry to educate, right? Sure. To show people what we know and what we've learned and, 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 and share it with them and share the experience with them. I think a lot of things have like boundaries, you know? It's like, oh, in order to be Japanese, like that's one of the first things I dealt with when I came over here. Like, oh, you're Japanese, but you're not doing this. It's like, well, Dude, you let know, all that yeah, let all that nonsense go, dude. I'm just I'm just trying to cook the food that I, I know tastes good. I, I believe in that. You know, if you like this food, great. You know, if you don't, then you know that's great too. Just you don't have to eat here. You don't <laughs> have to eat here, <laughs> right? Like I just <laughs> I do Korean Mexican tacos. Now I know Roy Choi started it years ago, but I've never had a Kogi truck. Yeah. So I don't know what his flavors so are like. Your own, right? Yeah. So I basically and there's no cookbook that said, oh. Right. Oh, call me tacos. Let's just, just try this. Yeah, one to you, five. You had to say, I like these flavors. I want to create it. And to me, a taco, it's just a vehicle. I can put whatever sure. story I want into it. And like I, want, I want people to eat and go, this is something that I've never had before. 
because it's ours. It's, it's our right. cooking. Whether your food is Japanese, it's neo Japanese, it's old school Japanese, it is hentai. <laughs> see? Which is see, also I, Japanese. See, I, I got some good jokes here. <laughs> Which is also Japanese. Yes, <laughs> I like that one. Um, remember that it's you. Okay. The, the flavors that you come up with, the food that you come up with, be proud of it. And if anybody ever says, hey, I ate something, and you, your past sees everything. I see it in my past all day long. If I see something where that bowl or plate or ram, ramekin? Um, I think yeah. that was, yeah. Uh, I'll say ramekin's more like. I know, it's round and Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, casserole dish. Casserole dish. That's the one. Uh, comes back half full or three quarters full. It's your job to go out there yeah, and ask them, hey. How full were you? How full are you? <laughs> and did I fuck up? Yeah, exactly. You know, D- did I just around. F up? I'm the first one to take blame of my food. Yeah, it is not my, it's not my team. It is not my purveyors. It is me mm-hmm. as a chef, as the leader of the group. If you didn't like something, do my bad. Absolutely. Let me give you your money back and then give you what you actually want. What it's supposed to be, yeah. What's supposed to be. Right. Because not everybody shares the flavors that we share. Not everybody shares, you know, they, they might say, oh, why did you burnoise that red onion? Right. I want you to do something else with it. Right. But you got to stick to your own, man. That's true. I did it because I believed in that's how that's what makes that dish very the very best. Right. And if you don't like it, I got karagi for you. <laughs> right. Simple as yeah, that. Exactly. Definitely. And then, All right. Uh, goals for 2022. Shh, we're already there now. Here we go. I want to hear it. All right. Um, I think my goals for 2022 are. I really got it. I think this has been great because I got to come out of my shell for this because I love the kitchen. I live in the kitchen, but what are you, I got to be able to. Uh, Hey, if I could be a Ninja Turtle, I might, you know. Which one would you Donatello, be? Donatello, maybe. Really? Yeah, maybe, you know, just wilding out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. You will come out of your shell. Yeah, what but, does that mean? But, yeah, I just want you to, you know, explore these these opportunities that are coming. You know, there's a lot of people that want to talk to me, want to see me, um, but I'm not too, like, uh, social. So i got to explore these opportunities for my team, for, you know, everybody that around me that counts on me. Okay. Just took the count on this. So that leading into expanding... I do have a, a breakfast concept that I've been trying to get open for a very long time now, which this kind of took priority, but that's, that is my dream. I have a breakfast comfort restaurant that we're trying to do. So that's 2022 stream. So uh, stay posted, you know, if okay. you're interested in the real fusion and uh, <clears throat> you'll see what's up with that. Whatever you have in mind, take it with their time. Yeah. Set goals and then make sure that you, you're accountable, man. You gotta be honest with yourself. Am I getting to where I wanna be at? every week every month until it gets there or at least set goals so you can at least you know see where you're at because if you didn't reach your goals you can reassess your goals yeah and and you know hitting your goals isn't always easy and you know what here's my thing you take a step look around does it feel does it feel right does it feel like you're supposed to be here yes take the next step if it doesn't take one step back yeah and go a different direction that's, definitely true. that's your choice but what's even worse is sitting on your ass and not doing anything. Yeah, you had this whole COVID, you know, to sit on your ass or do something. So whether you sit on your ass or do something, I think it's time to do something now. Do something now. With that being said, <laughs> thank you so much to Rome Fusion. Thank you so much to Chef Phil and thank Mount you. Phil and all your food and flavors. You, thank you. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, there's a Venmo and PayPal link below. Consider, just consider, uh, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Consider oh donating or pledging some money to the channel. It allows us to go to more small businesses and tell their story. Uh, this is going to be one 12 months of me going from state to state. Oh. Well, not all the states, but some states, city to city, not all the cities, and going to small businesses and telling their story because this, at the end of the day, is what it's all about. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Yes. Uh, we're at like 18,000 right now, which is... 17,999 more than I thought I would ever have. Hey. Comment on the video. If you want to see Phil on more episodes of future FK Deliciousness, and it stands for fucking deliciousness, let me know. If you want to be the if you want to see me and Phil to be in the kitchen cooking together, uh, without a shirt and only our aprons. Wow. Wow, I know. Buns out or what? <laughs> <laughs> Suns out, buns out. Uh, leave in the comment below. I'll leave their I'll leave their links for their social media in the description. If you're ever in the Sierra Madre area or if just even in Southern California, do yourself the biggest favor. Come down here and come eat. Um, I think the steak is the is the go-to. Line, uh, if I had to choose one dish out of all four, five, five, 
uh, I would choose a steak. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think the texture is amazing. It literally shreds out. And again, with the prime rib cut, which is the centerpiece, you're going to get meat that's more meatier in flavor, and it's all good. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, we are now monetized on, on YouTube, so please watch the, watch the ads. They are long, but I make four cents every time you watch it, and when you put in a hundred views, that's four dollars. A show. Cheers to that. A show. Hey, four dollars adds up, man. Dude, gas prices these days. You're telling me, man. I totally feel you. That's why I live down the street and I ride a bike. Add a boy. <laughs> My name is Calvin Bowie. They call me Captain Charisma. I can Phil, wait, can I hug you right now? I, okay. Phil, I'm really proud of you. Oh, damn, damn, man. I'm married. But I'm really proud of you. Keep, keep on doing what you do, and, and I really hope to keep following what your, your, your journey. Thank you. And if you ever have a question,